Station volume, zero percent. Good afternoon, and welcome to, um, I'm going to call this, uh, the Collector's Corner. I, um, I'm going to talk to you about collecting, and, uh, this will be a series that's about, you know, the do's and don'ts of collecting. And, uh, for the first episode, I think I'd like to talk to you guys about what a, uh, you know, the, the biggest headache in collecting of these days, and that is scalping. So I'm going to talk to you today about what a scalper is, and what a scalper does, and what's the difference between a scalper and somebody selling stuff, at, something on the internet. So, I'll start this off by stating, not everybody is a scalper. That's important to know. Not everyone who resells stuff on the internet is a scalper. I know, I know. Oh, I can, I can hear, I can hear the, 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 the torches getting lit and the pitchforks getting raised. But listen to me here. All right. So we'll give an example. Say you have a twenty dollar toy. All right. It's twenty dollars. I know, I know. The deluxes don't really cost twenty dollars anymore. It's already increased. But for the sake of this argument, it's a twenty dollar action figure. And somebody notices that there. Their, uh, their store, their toy store, has seven of these $20 action figures. And they get online and they notice that uh, many places around, the play, uh, around their area don't have any of these action figures. They have people on the internet are complaining. The other collectors are like, we can't get a hold of these. We can't find them anywhere. This individual buys three of the seven available action figures and then proceeds to sell two of them at $10 markup on price, so sells them online for $30 a piece. This person is not a scalper. That person is a collector trying to give other collectors a helping hand by allowing them access to these things that they wouldn't have access to in their own areas and only charging a small uptick in price for, you know, the convenience of, you know, it was them that went to the store, it was them that found the item, and it was them that put the money up front. So they want a $10 for all their effort. And that's reasonable. You know, a small uptick in price for uh, something that's very rare to find is a reasonable uptick in price on the internet. Now, what's a scalper then? Well, a scalper is an individual. We'll use the, uh, this $20 action figure again. So man walks into the store, toy store, sees seven of these $20 action figures. The individual buys all seven of these $20 action figures, and then proceeds to sell each of these $20 action figures online between $40 and $60. Now this individual is a scalper. They have, one, removed all the ability for an individual to purchase this item from the store by buying all of the items from the store. That is the first step to making a person a scalper. Step number two is that they're selling it at double to triple market value. This isn't a couple of bucks and being like, hey man, can I get a couple of extra bucks for helping you out here, you know, to pay for the gas and, and the convenience and all the other expenses that go with daily living. Like, that's a reasonable thing. But charging double, triple, quadruple times the value? Well, that's, in, that's, that's insane. That's insanity. And that's a scalper. That's what a scalper is. A scalper is an individual who finds something at a cheap and reasonable price and then upsells that item enormously, inflating the value of it. For instance, the Cobra BAT from G.I. Joe Classified right now is selling between $45 and $56 on Amazon. Okay? This is a $22 item. You can purchase it for $22 at the store. It's not even really out yet. Uh, something mixed up with Hasbro and they've been just sending these things out. Hasbro has already announced that there's going to be thousands of these guys. You know, there, there are tens of thousands of these guys. Maybe even 100,000 units made of the Cobra BAT and the Alley Viper. The Alley Viper is happening at the same time and experiencing the same exact price gouging that the Cobra BAT is experiencing. Why, you might ask? Well, both of them are army builders. And many of these individuals who are scalpers have these uh, scalper bots, these little robots that will, they, they, they have program, uh, little, little programs on the computer that will purchase a bunch of pre-orders and then turn those pre-orders around, you know, uh, pre around and sell them for an uptick in value. These individuals don't even have the action figure in their collection. They just have it pre-ordered 
And when you pre-order from them, all they do is change the address that Amazon's sending the package. So Amazon's no longer sending them the, the, their BAT that they paid $20 for. Amazon's now sending their BAT to you because you paid $56 for it. So they just put your address on the, on the ticket and it's done. Amazon sends it to you, they get paid, everybody's happy. No, no, not everybody's happy. The individuals who wanted to get that item for $20 and pre-order it aren't happy. For instance, when I was looking at the bat two weeks ago, I saw, I, I check it every day because I'm looking for that $20 price point. One day I found it as low as $20. I grabbed it. I went and I, it was the Amazon store itself selling it. I clicked on the link and I went to pre-order now and I hit pre-order now. Nothing happened. And I hit pre-order now. Nothing happened. I held my finger on the pre-order now, and my voice assistant said, pre-order now button, grayed out. And that tells me that in the span of me noticing this item and getting to the page for it, to pre-order it. Now, it may, it may have taken me two minutes because I'm slower at this than other people. I have to touch all over the screen to find the pre-order button. But that's, that's not a lot of time. It was gone. They were all gone. And then there was a new seller on um, on the grouping of BAT selling them for forty seven dollars, and this is I just I really want you people you my viewers to understand I really want you to understand, please do not get taken advantage of by scalpers. Sit there and do the math. When you see an item and you go, wow, that's really expensive, look up its market value, its retail value, and then do a comparison. How much is this item being sold? in comparison to how much it was sold at its retail cost. Now, if the item is deemed a collector's item and is a few years old, for instance, we will use Masterpiece Soundwave, the Toys R Us exclusive that came with all the cassettes and the extra doohickeys and stuff, okay? When that item came out in Toys R Us, I purchased it for $100, bought it for $100. I, I opened it, I played with it, but I always kept the box and I always put everything back in the box, you know, the right way it was supposed to go because, well, I'm visually impaired and I lose things and it came with a lot of things. It was, it was just, just so much stuff in this box for the sound wave. Well, when I was doing the channel, I sold my sound wave in box with all the other stuff and I sold them for 270. Now, was I scalping? No. Toys R Us doesn't exist anymore or at least it's now existing again, but it didn't exist then. And this item had already been out for almost, actually no, for 10 years. This item had been out for 10 years by then, or at least eight. And this item became a very hard to find item because it was old and it was a major collectible. And those things are important to remember when you're, when you're doing stuff. So it, I wasn't scalping. I was simply selling something at its current collectible price. Now, if I had put that item up for $500, yeah, no, I would have been considered a scalper. I would have called myself a scalper at that. But I looked at what the prices were going for, and I gave a reasonable price of $270. Now, they were selling between $250 and $300 at the time, so I picked a price in the middle. And I stuck to the normal pricing that everyone else in the uh, community was selling it at, and I wasn't scalping. But it's difficult, it's really difficult to figure out the difference sometimes between what is a scalping and what isn't a scalping. And it's always important, you know, don't call people out on scalping when you're not sure if they're scalping or not. They, they could just be selling highly collectible items that are very hard to come by and are years old. That's the other important thing. If you're going to sell something for an insane amount over its retail cost, then wait at least five years. Wait until it's nearly impossible to find that item for any other price. It, that one makes sense. Older items are going to cost more, especially when they're in box. Now, had I had the sound wave out of its box and lost the box and the majority of the pieces, I would not have been selling it for 270 I would have felt terrible. I would have sold it for 200 If it had all the pieces and it was just missing the box. If it was just the sound wave and a laser beak and most of the pieces were missing, I would have sold it for a hundred. Flat out, no lie there, it would have been a hundred. It would have been worth a hundred because the Masterpiece Soundwave was a very good figure, even, even by today's standards. But 
Anyway guys, uh, I just kind of wanted to explain to you a bit about what scalping is and what's going on with it. And a reason that scalping is occurring is because of the current market and, and what's going on in our economy. And the fact that you have uh, many people who are cashing in their life savings to purchase as many of these things as possible because they want to increase their income. And that's reasonable. That's understandable. I get it. I get that an individual would want to increase their income by selling a lot more stuff at a higher price. But there's a moral code to markets, at least in my opinion, there's a moral code to markets. And the moral code is make a profit, but don't make an obscene profit. And that's all. That, 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 that's my moral code when it comes to markets. It's just, you know, you can still make a profit without gouging your customers. And the nice thing about not gouging your customers is they'll come back again because they have more money to spend. So if you're not gouging them, uh, then they actually could buy three or four items from you. And what does that mean when they're purchasing four items from you? That's four items off your shelf. That's four items gone. That means that you have shelf space now to put four new items in. Oh, but you gouged them. So they only bought one item. So you can only replace one item. You still got three other items sitting in your warehouse taking up space and taking up money and just being wrapped up in all of this. And it, it works and it doesn't work. It, it can be slow and then it can be fast, but... At the end of the day, it's better not to gouge the prices insanely, and it's best if you just, you know, make a small profit, but don't go making an insane profit. You don't need to make an insane profit. If you make a small one, then you gain customer loyalty and customer trust, and the customers will come back to you. But that's just, you know, my business degree talking. It's, uh, it's... Been nice talking to you guys. I think that's everything I've got to talk to you about. Um, I, I hope that my explanation of scalpers wasn't too crazy and you actually understood it. I I uh, tend to have a difficulty explaining things to people. Uh, they, for some reason, don't always get what I say. And I have to explain myself multiple times. Escalated spam texts are draining your data usage. Please eradicate spam messages greater than greater than dictatorway.com slash xswkdai. That is another lesson. Okay, I'm not going to stop this message because you just heard that text message, right? You just heard that. That is a spam text message. Just letting you know, that was spam. Because you would see the bill or something like that. But no, no, that's just, that was just a spam. They're telling you about how your your text messages are increasing their, uh, your, your, your data plan. That's not right. You have unlimited text and data. I have a limited text, at least. I don't think I have a limited data, but I have a limited text, so I shouldn't be experiencing that. That means it's a it's a spam. So there, random random lesson about spam texts for you. Don't don't uh, feed them. Just just do what I'm about to do. Whenever I get off the phone with here, or I uh, finish my uh, conversation with you and turn this video off, I'm gonna go into that message. I'm gonna hit the block button, and I'm gonna sleep easy because it's fake. I mean, if it's not fake, then, I'll, then then we'll see it in the bill. But chances are, that's just somebody wanting you to give them your information. And uh, that's another thing to talk about on this on this channel. I guess I'll, I'll bring that up in another conversation is, you know, when and when not to give people personal information when you're purchasing from them online. That's an important thing to know because there's a lot of scammers out there who just want your personal information to turn around and screw you with it. So, all right. I've blathered on long enough. It's been a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed the show, and I hope that you have learned something today, because, you know, that was the intent of this. Do you have anything to say, Sugar? Hmm? Huh? Do you want to say hi? Say hi, Sugar. Yeah. Yeah, who's a, who's a pathetic potato cat? Yes. Yes, you're just an adorable potato cat. Yes, you are. All right, well... I'm Blind Prime, and uh, this has been Blind Prime's Collector's Corner. I hope you've enjoyed, and tune in next time. Until next time.